Located in the heart of a tropical paradise, combining the thrills of exhilarating water slides and serene relaxation amidst stunning scenery. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and for this video, I'm going to provide an overview of Universal Orlando's gloriously themed Volcano Bay water park, covering all 15 attractions. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future Orlando vacation content. Volcano Bay opened in 2017, part of the ever-growing Universal Orlando Resort, inspired by the fictional Waturi Islanders who are said to have stumbled across this tropical paradise and decided to make it their home before adding several captivating water attractions. Similar to Magic Kingdom, day guests can't drive directly to the park, instead you'll get picked up in colourful complimentary buses from the main Universal parking structure. After you're dropped off, you'll navigate through ancient tunnels to the main entrance and given a Tapu Tapu wristband which you can use to make all purchases as well as tapping into the park's virtual queues which I'll cover in more detail in the video description. At Volcano Bay, all of the slides and attractions are split into four sections which are Wave Village, River Village, the Rainforest Village, all centred by the famous Krakatau Volcano which serves as the base for four popular attractions. When first entering into the park, you'll arrive at Wave Village which is where We'll start our attraction tour. At the end of the entrance pathway, the tropical oasis unfolds into a Polynesian paradise with an unforgettable view of the towering 200 foot tall volcano, the majestic centerpiece of the park, and stands as a symbol of the park's adventurous spirit, representing both fire and water, with streaming waterfalls and views of a translucent drop slide, which we'll be heading inside later in the video. To the south of the volcano are the crystal waters of the giant Waturi Beach wave pool. Every 10 minutes, a loud bell chimes, which can be heard all around the park indicating the imminent change from calming waters to chopping waves. Surrounding the pool is the park's largest sandy beach. It may be tempting to pick this area for your seating, but does get very crowded in the busy summer months. There are better options which I'll cover later in the video. Adjacent to Waturi Beach is the Reef, a leisure pool with much calmer waters, including a private waterfall and exciting underwater views of riders speeding through the clear tube of Kokiri Body Plunge. You can also use your Tapu Tapu wristbands to interact with the Tap 2 play point. Next we have River Village, which is an island accessed via the northbound bridge when travelling from Wave Village. This area is aimed mainly for young families, named after the scenic river that flows through it. If you are travelling with young kids, I recommend grabbing a lounger in this region of the park. You have the nearby River Village lockers which are far less busy than the two Wave Village lockers. Since we haven't done a slide yet, we'll start the River Village tour with the Onu and Ike Moana family raft slides. As with many attractions in the park, it's split into two with slides on either side of the same tower. So Onu is the blue slide on the right and the Ike Moana is the green one to the left. We'll start with Ike Moana. This is a gentler raft slide which sends riders in and out of twisty and misty tunnels. Compared to most slides at Volcano Bay, pretty laid back by comparison. But the faint-hearted won't want to mix up the colours, as Onu is one of the park's most intense attractions. It begins with a deceptively slow turn inside an enclosed tube, before throwing guests down a stomach-churning drop, rising up a sloped wall simulating the sensation of rising up an enormous wave. Moments later, riders experience the feeling of weightlessness up another wall, before heading through a twisting enclosed tube and sailing out onto the run-out pool. The next attraction for River Village is the Runamucca Reef three-storey water playground which dominates the western half of the island. Themed as an enchanted coral reef which has been turned into a watery wonderland guarded by an octopus, surrounded by bubbling geysers, water guns, dump cups and three kid-friendly slides. Close by is the Tottiki Reef made for the youngest Waturi Islanders which has a kid-sized volcano and spraying Maori fountains. The remaining attraction for River Village is the Kopiko Wai Winding River, the park's obligatory lazy river, one of two large rivers found in the park. You can enter via two entry points. Once inside, the current takes you on a peaceful scenic ride on inner tubes, giving you time to appreciate the design and beauty of the park through exotic plants and trees, underwater slides, through centre islands, water sprayers, under bridges. The highlight is being taken inside the gorgeously lit Stargazer's Cavern, a mist-filled grotto with constellations of pinpoint lights covering its rocky ceiling. No expense spared landscaping, the perfect place to unwind, provided you're not attacked by some rascals when floating past Runamucca Reef. Next we have Rainforest Village, so we'll travel over the volcano to the opposite side of the park for the section which holds most of the park's attractions. Before we cover these, I should mention that for those without kids, I do recommend using the lockers over here during busy periods. You can often get some shaded seating in this area if you get here quickly at rope drop. 
The first rainforest village attraction is the small Puka Uli Lagoon section, a relaxing zero entry pool for kids with tropical bongo drums and spraying jets of water. Around the corner are the Oh No and Oh Yar slides facing away from the volcano, which guests travel to via a rope bridge at the loading tower. The green one is the Oh Yar, and the purple one is the more intense Oh No slide. Guests are sent down the intertwining slides before shooting guests out into a 10 foot splash pool. Oh Yar launches from 4 feet high, whereas the Oh No finale climaxes from 6 feet. A very aesthetically pleasing attraction from the pool side. It's great to get a look at your friends and family that follow you down, but definitely one to avoid unless you're a strong swimmer. Over to the far east of the map are the Maku and Puihi six person raft slides. Maku means wet and Puihi means wild in the fictional Waturi language. A likely nod to my old favourite water park on iDrive. On Maku, riders are plunged through a giant yellow tube with some subtle twists and turns and open sections around a bowl centred by an erupting geyser before a leisurely cruise back into a final tube that leads to the runoff pool. So the green slide on the left is Puihi, a more intense chute, which begins with a slow turn before plunging riders down a huge funnel with a few hang time moments as you sway back and forth, later cruising through a wide tube bathed with radiant green illumination before entering the runoff pool with a view of the volcano for those fortunate to be facing forwards. If we head towards the volcanic centre of the park, we have the Punga Races side-by-side -side body slides, which appeals to families with a competitive streak. At the top, single riders are able to race their family and friends down four lanes through what Universal calls underwater sea caves. Used to be a mat slide before it caused a couple injuries. A little tip for my fellow overly competitive dads, the orange one is meant to be the fastest. Next, we're headed to the top of the park for the Taniwa tubes, which rather confusingly consist of two attractions, which are the blue Raki slides and the green Tonga slides. They both have two slides each, so four in total. All similar, but not identical. At the top of the joint loading towers, guests will jump on the single file two-person raft before gliding down their chosen slide. The green slides offer more open sections, whereas the blue slides contain more sharp turns, so slightly more thrills. Whichever one you choose, watch out for the tiki statues that'll spray water at unsuspecting riders that enter the run-out pool for all four slides. One of the great things about Taniwa tubes is that you rarely need to tap into the virtual queue, as it's nearly always ride now. The remaining attraction for Rainforest Village is Tiawa the Fearless River, the second of two river attractions, which is longer and much faster. When entering from its western entrance, you'll swim past a large geyser rock feature. Then once you've entered the circuit, you'll drift around clockwise dodging water jets and through the dense foliage, the Taniwa tubes and rope bridges. Around the corner, you'll come to an impressively themed ancient temple, which contains the eastern access point. After passing this, you'll drift into the Krakatau volcano and under its thrill slides that we're yet to cover. Another tip here, towards the end, I recommend slowing down by swimming upstream until you hear the beat of the drum from the nearby wave generator so you can catch the peak of the waves. Despite being horizontal the whole way through, one of the park's best attractions, as with Kopika Y Winding River, really useful as you can tap into one of the slides and wait in the virtual queue while sailing around the river. Word of warning though, has been known to cause some scrapes and bruises, so mind your surroundings. For our final section of the park, we'll head directly towards the volcano. Before we get to the volcano, we'll take a detour via the Waturi Beach, as this would be a good time to pick up the park's signature snack, which is the Waturi Fusion Ice Cream from Coca Paroka Ice Cream Kona, a combination of banana, blue raspberry, orange and strawberry. I will leave a brief overview of all the other dining options in the video description for those interested. The first attraction to cover in the volcano is Vold's Caverns, so we'll go for a walk on the bridge that goes inside the volcano through its gushing falls. Here you'll find a network of caverns concealed behind the waterfalls, featuring some interactive Tapu Tapu points. Here you'll find colourful fountains surrounding the mythical Vol, the digital spirit of the Krakatau, who will banter with guests in a similar way to the mystic fountain in Islands of Adventure, but this guy can also trigger a light display of a mythical fish on a cave wall. Located near the south entrance of the Vol Caverns are the Kala and Tai Nui body slides, for which you'll need to climb over 200 steps from Rainforest Village to get to the loading platform. At the top, twin drop doors simultaneously plunge guests down incredible steep twisting slides before plunging riders into the runoff pool. Both slides are similar, but the green is the most intense. Great slides for thrill seekers and has surprisingly low wait times, which I think is due to the inconvenience of getting to the top, height requirements and the fear factor. Two more attractions left. Next, we'll head back to the wave village near the reef pool for the Kokiri body plunge slide. 
On your way to the top, you'll be rewarded with a stunning vista of the park, as well as great views of the attractions both under and around the volcano. At the top, without warning, the floor will disappear from the breakaway boxes and you'll plummet 125 feet at a 90 degree angle. Whilst you won't see much, other park guests will be able to see you plunging through the clear tube located in between Watori Beach and the reef pool, as well as the dramatic splashdown exit. Unlike Kala and Tainui, there's only one slide, so it generates a longer virtual queue, so I'd make this one of the first slides that you tap into in the morning. If you're limited for time, Kala and Tainui is better value time-wise. The final slide for the attraction action tour is the Krakatau Aqua Coaster, which is access towards the top of Rainforest Village, the park's flagship attraction. Guests board four-person canoes, immediately entering a steep drop, but this is not your typical downward slide, as each time you hit the bottom, induction motors will propel guests upwards. The next drop takes guests through the misty volcano in between Kala Tainui above you and the fearless river below you before taking hairpin turns inside enclosed tubes, repeating the pattern of rolling hills, which you very rarely experience on a water slide. Towards the end, you'll speed alongside the Fearless River, ending with a hairpin turn back to the loading station. I don't think there's a better water park attraction in Central Florida, but unfortunately its demand significantly exceeds its painfully low capacity, so I recommend tapping into the virtual queue as soon as you rope drop the park, otherwise be prepared for several laps around the rivers whilst you wait hours in the virtual queue. Well that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Always appreciate extra tips in the comments if anyone has any. Do consider subscribing for future guides, and if you're headed to Orlando soon, I recommend these two videos next.